Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another ink profile. Today we're doing ink number seven in the Viewer's Choice 2 series. We're going to do Bunga Box La Amant. Um, and this one we, we did a little bit of, uh, you know, inky experimenting in the last video, but this is the full profile of it. We'll get to see it in three notebooks and on five different papers and on some uh, different panels to kind of see how it compares to other purple inks. This is really one of my favorite inks, so here we go. I'm going to put it in the water to see how it does in there. <clears throat> and show you that uh, Colorverse Supernatural did completely disappear in the water bath test, so it's a totally normal uh, fountain pen ink and as I always say, uh, then we need to know that because then we'll know to uh, make special effort if we do an envelope with it to wax over it or tape over it or use a different permanent ink. So, okay, while well, that's going, let's just dive right in to the Rhodia Gold Book, my ink journal. And let's see, I got to back up a little because I did want to show that we are just about, we're just about finished. We got just one more spot for uh, KWZ Green number five tomorrow or whenever, <laughs> soon. But here it is. It didn't come out quite as dark right here as it is showing on the other paper, but uh, probably had to do with how many dips in the paintbrush. Or this this was from a broad nib, so it looks more purpley, more dark there. Uh, same thing on the Tamoy River paper, put down heavily with a paintbrush. But it is a dark purple, but it's got a lot of range, and it's got like a a lot of shading at times you know it's it's a very uh, interesting ink so I found that uh, it's available at Anderson pens you have the option of a three mil sample for 375 or the 50 mil bottle and I'm going to show you my bottle before we're finished for uh, $43 because I went through two samples and I just I love the ink so much I knew I couldn't stand it if I didn't get it in a bottle and I write with it a lot so it's been worth it to buy it so this is all in the uh, serendipity broad nib and then I switched over to the um, uh, Gen Hao 992 with a fine nib uh, and even though it's fine it can kind of come across as a medium because it's uh, it's not as fine as some of the other fines. It's not like a Metropolitan or anything. So um, I'm just crazy about this ink. And I like it in all the different nibs I've tried it in, really. Uh, including medium, which is not really represented until we get into one of the little journals. Um, I read on the Anderson website that it's made by Sailor for Bunga Box Pen Store in Japan. So, well, let's just go ahead and look at the, the ink. Um, I have it in its box, and here it is. It's in a little box, and then um, oops, I'm gonna mangle it. Uh, the paper has something real important to say about the inside of the. And then you know it's just a simple little uh, 50 mil bottle of ink, but inside the bottle there is a little um, catcher, and uh, this little paper explains about it. It says to close the cap tightly. Turn the bottle upside down slowly. Um, this is when you're low on ink, I believe. Um, turn the bottle back again slowly to the original position. You can see the ink in the reservoir. Well, mine's still, you know, thank goodness, uh, quite full. So we won't mess with that right now. But then you could kind of see in that little illustration that it has a little place where it catches the ink. So then it says, please insert your pen into the reservoir and fill it according to the instructions. Okay, so, the, you know, some of you have probably worked with this type of a thing before. And I haven't, so this is my first, uh, you know, experience with it. It says over here that the color L Amant um, expresses love. This red-purple color was inspired by the cardinal color of Catholic vestments. And became a very beautiful color. I have to agree with them. And then, of course, it's in, uh, I think, uh, Japanese on the other side. So, you know, um, it's it's just nice. That's all. But let's concentrate on how the ink looks in the nibs and on the different papers here. Just wanted you to see that since I do have it to show you. Um, let's go right into the 
Cafe Note, which is Tamoy River paper on uh, by Nanami Paper Company. And this whole, this type of paper is where I, I just love it the best. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because I, <coughs> oh my. I, when we, whenever we run the furnace, it is, uh, it dries me all out. That's what this is all about. And it's been going on for a couple weeks now, so. Uh, it's quite chilly here. Okay, so here it is in the broad nib and over here in the fine nib. And I just love the shading that I get and how it, it has such a range from dark, dark purple and then it gets lighter. You, you can see it is lighter in that nib. Um, it almost made me sorry that I didn't go right ahead and clean out the Genhao X750 and stick with that. But I, I, there was some reason why I did this, so I don't really remember right now. Must have been a good reason at the time. So things are going real well, and hopefully you can see here, um, you know, how nicely this ink looks. The lighting can be an issue, so hopefully that won't deter too much. But let's get into the one where I think it really does show. It shows everything so clearly, which is this little notebook. The Nemesine. <clears throat> Oops, and continuing with... Uh, Boho Berry Challenge, um, I just ha also include a little bit about the ink I'm using. So I'm also writing with the Moon Man uh, Mini, the glass nib. And this, I don't know, it, it, it kind of bends toward what I would call a medium nib. It looks it to me anyway. No way to tell because it is a glass nib. But this, this just shows how it can go from dark, dark, dark to, to kind of a lighter, almost... Uh, like a purple rain or even actually I was noticing that it, it, it could even ranges down close to the Sid's Cruise Knot Dark Orchid but we'll get into that in a minute when we see the panels <clears throat> for now let's continue with paper samples um, first being the Tamoy River paper and a couple of you got letters from me today with this because that's why um, I'm a little late <clears throat> because I put it first to write some letters and last night I did Christmas cards and and today I got into pen pal letters so a couple of you will you know by the date see and you'll see this ink in your letter so um, I love how it shades on here and uh, that's both pens but I was using my serendipity broad um, hybrid pen to write letters today and then on the Loistrum dot grid nice and dark in both nibs actually <laughs> it kind of retained it better on, on that paper it's interesting how it lightens up on some of them but let's see here I'm gonna want this on the floor let's go and look at Rhodia dot grid 80 gram okay um, I do see a difference and you know I think this nib has a sweet spot too and so I did notice at times where um, and I'm the I'm the one who uh, you know tuned that nib and and smoothed it, so it's it's probably my fault. But it does have a point where it likes to be, and if it isn't, then it can kind of not write the same. Because right in the middle there, all my little figure eights just look too light, and that's I must have been holding it wrong or something. Who knows? Because um, that pen keeps up really well. And here's Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper. And let's see, whoops, oh, I'm getting shadows. It's that time in the afternoon here, but I'm just determined to get this uh, review today because we have one more, and then there's a lot of exciting uh, things that I can't wait to work on. Um, lots of shading on this paper here. At least I can see it, and it's rough to show you, but, and then nice and uh, dark there. <laughs> it's funny, you did it the same thing. Maybe I went too fast on the figure eights. It could be. I'll have to watch my speed. Okay, here's Office Depot College Rule paper, and nice on there. I'm trying to make sure we don't see it shadows over if I hold it just right. That's too bad. <clears throat> okay, so um, let's check for bleed through. I don't believe there was any. No, it's dark and there's shadowing uh, up above my thumbs there, but nothing that I'd call bleed through, so that's good. Okay, let's look at our panels, which are a little tiny bit complicated today. And let's peek in on it. Okay, it looks like, you know, I can still read it. Not really, really well, but I can. And it uh, we'll see what it's like after it dries. I'll show you next video how that turned out. Let's get 
onto the first panel which has the ink on it and then we'll have to do a little bit of shuffling so here it is right here bunga box lamont and it was on the brighter end of uh when we were looking at jr bon uh Porcier de lune it, it just happened to come up as a purple and um i've got some other panels too that i want to put it beside and we'll work on that but uh it kind of reminds me of purple rain but there is a difference and we can kind of see that let's see i could slip this right under this is another little panel now we can have them side by side and i do think that makes a difference doesn't it i was writing in a comment the other day you know people were mentioning uh, something about how different these can look depending on what's beside them and yes it's true when i used to be a live streamer um, you know, it's the camera towards you and I, I had to often go change my shirt because the color of my shirt would just completely change my face. It would make my face look either red or weird or, you know, and so I learned that color make it just like color and the camera do something. But anyway, that's nice to see them side by side there. And we can do the same thing with the dark orchid here on the right is Sitz Kruznok dark orchid. And you can see there's a big difference, you know, between Bunga Box Lamont and that. Uh, but uh, this one and this one seem to be the closest on this panel. Then there's another ink that that is, uh, uh, I want to get in underneath there and show you too, because Krish Krishna Anakai, which I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this one has, a, it reminds me of it. It's not the same. It, this one tends to be darker. Uh, and I know it's darker in a nib. I remember that. Way darker. But there's something about it that it, they seem similar. So if you are familiar with this one, which I have a, a, had enjoyed a sample of, um, you probably will understand what I mean. Uh, this one stays on the darkest end of what uh, Bunga Box Lamont is capable of, of producing if you're putting down a lot of ink if that makes sense i, I hope it does <laughs> it might not <laughs> i don't know okay so you know we've got like uh birmingham andy warhol pop art purple here by my thumb and that's much more of a traditional purple kind of a i, I guess you'd call it that it's not quite as uh violet I, dare i say that or bright Okay, there was was there something else I wanted to show? Okay, yes, I did. I wanted to put it side by side with Lamy Violet, which I probably just didn't do before. Okay, so there you can see that, that there's a difference. I really feel like there's fewer inks that look like the Bunga Box ink we're doing today than some of these others that resemble a purple. You see how we've got three in a row there that, wow, they really are alike. But I couldn't. I couldn't give you three um, that looked just like this one. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't find anything that was that close. So I think that says something about the uniqueness of it. And it does surprise me. But I'd want to hear from you if you feel like you've got something that looks uh, really similar to this. I'd love to hear that. Because I don't have everything. There's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different inks. So I think that pretty much does it. As far as, you know, the comparisons, we just, there's no comparison between, like, Diamine Imperial Purple, which is just, your, like, a standard, you know, co coming out of the color crayon box, purple. Regular purple is what I'd call that. Um, there's just no comparison, because this is just brighter. So, okay, so here's that. Hopefully that was of some use to you. Now, let's get right into the visual journal, and I know we've been in here before. So because we, I did a video, a little 10 minute video on this process. So here's the, the one that was the standalone. Whoops, get it to focus. Uh, I do love how that dried. You know, it's, it's um, there's just something really dramatic about it, about how it showed all the inner colors as they come out. Um, probably not as much on the lavender in there. It's very, very subtle, but you can see the blue um, on this one better kind of let me hold that up a little this little splatter is to be ignored but you could see kind of the blue that came out of there that was cool 
and uh, it just you know it does all kinds of neat things I, I'm not really great at making the landscapes but I enjoy it anyway I and I continue to try it even though I'm just as happy with just one ink thing and whatever happens like if you just cut that lower part off I'm just cool with it in fact it kind of looks like a little cove almost I mean it's amazing what you can just get just by laying down water and then putting a drop of ink or a drop here a drop there that kind of thing so hopefully this gives you anybody who's interested in you know that aspect of using it as a wash or watercolor or background or or any kind of little piece that will give you some information so that's that now what is next is the kwz green number five and that that will complete our eight inks that were chosen these were the second this was the second series because we did eight um, of the top rated ones and these are the next ones with the next amount of votes so that'll be next um and i wanted to just show you sort of a little uh what came in today um and then i will be talking about it more but this is what came in today. I did something really unusual and different. Um, what I did, and I want you to be able to see that, it says Ferris Wheel Press. I uh, was a, I guess you'd, I don't know whether you call it a sponsor. Or, I, I participated in a Kickstarter for ink. And then you got to choose uh, one bottle of ink at the level that I was able to, you know, um, help them. I, and so I chose this one, and it's called Tanzanite Sky, which I think is going to be like a deep blue or purple or blue-purple or something. You know, I haven't even swatched it yet. I'm just showing you this um, because I will be doing uh, a profile on it eventually. And I was really excited about it. I, my understanding is that they're made in Canada. But, you know, my box came from New York, and on here it says... Um, yeah, designed and made in Canada. Okay, cool. And then Ferris Wheel Press. Markham. Oh, okay. Mar that's I, I was thinking that said something else. I was thinking it said Oregon. It says it's be Ontario, I guess, because O-N. I'm not exactly familiar with all of the Canada. I should be. I, I grew up right on the Canadian border. So there was just something about this. Probably the bottle. Should I open it? I should at least show you, right? Because then, then you'll see why I, I went all dopey and ordered this. But <laughs> it comes in a, a little drawstring bag, too, which, you know, I don't know why packaging can get to us, but it can. And this is just the beginning. I mean, this this is cool, but nobody really needs this, right? And nobody needs this <laughs> drawstring bag either. But this was what got to me. The bottle. The bottle is just amazing, and... I love the bolt-shaped cover, I just, or, or cap, or whatever you want to call it, oh my goodness. I don't know, it just got to me, but you know, everybody watching this understands, I'm not going to be judged, I might be, <laughs> you know, in other circles I might be put in a, in some kind of a <laughs> rehab, but uh, not here. So, this, I can't even remember how much ink it is, I, if I had to guess, I'd, oh, 85. I was going to guess less, so that's good. Okay, 85 mils, a beautiful bottle. And if, you know, I, I debated and debated because there was there were three to choose from, and oh, goodness, it was hard to pick. But then I remembered, you know, how much I love kind of a blue, and, and I just, uh, I believe the, the other two categories, I was pretty much covered with ink, so I thought, why not get something that that is uh, in my... Uh, favorite color group and that I don't have like where I have the Lamont that I'm crazy about the Bunga Box you know might as well you know make sure I diversify a little so this will be a full ink profile and I will have to do some research because I have no idea like when this is released when it will be released and, and everything but I'm interested in that too because the, the other colors were so hard to eliminate and just pick one so I just wanted to show you it came in the mail today and surprised me that it came so quickly um, so that's that's something to look forward to too along with the and I'm dying to get into the ink flight but I'm excited too to complete this series because this was something we all you know we all worked together on to decide and voted and everything back back in I think September was the initial vote so 
I will see you next time. I can see I'm almost at 20 minutes and that's not what I planned. So I will see you with the next video. Have a great day. Bye for now.